All right, Jeff Shaw, I hope you enjoyed that song. I think you're in the bus listening right now. Um, that was some metal. So there, there's that. We did it. Uh, this is Fargo Frequently Asked Questions. We are here with uh, the amazing Tony Tilton. We were talking off the air all the millions of things uh, that he's involved in. You're, you are, are quite a man. <laughs> Thanks. No, I just keep busy. I just keep busy. I've got a lot of interest and a lot of things going on so well you, you hold a high bar to uh to to measure up to i we are going to move into frequently asked questions so this show is incredibly popular we get listener mail emails mm -hmm. from all around the country Great. people are curious about fargo north dakota and so they have some questions yeah. they got q's we got a's sure let's go ahead and dive into them you can maybe help answer sure so michael johnson from atlanta georgia asks are there any haunted or paranormal sites in fargo that intrigue locals and visitors there are actually and, and as a matter of fact we have um at ValleyCon, we have uh, a strong paranormal section of our programming mm. and uh adrian lee a, a psychic from uh, minneapolis area um he's a good friend he's coming up and they're doing an active investigation on a couple of spaces um he and his producer there they have a show called unscripted paranormal that's just premiering and um they've done like, quite a few other things but they're They've been shooting stuff in that with the Fargo Paranormal Group. Um, I'm a member kind of out, out of that group, and um, they're connected with us at ValleyCon. Um, they've done some active investigations here in Fargo. Of really? A couple of businesses that they've invited them over because of incidents that have occurred. And, um, yeah, and I can't say out. You know, they want to keep very hush those, hush. They want to keep it quiet. Yeah. What kind they, of businesses? So are these like office firms and it's well, spooky there's, stuff, there's, or is it like a, a restaurant, few, hotel, a few downtown type of buildings that yeah. have issues? Yeah. And um, a couple of places like a an older um, event venue that's in town um, that they've had issues. There's also the, the well known ones are like a bonanza that there's there's been stuff and they do they do a tour they do a ghost tour out there. But there's there's several around this area. Well, and you're inviting some of that with ValleyCon this Friday because oh, sure. that's yeah. going to be f well, Friday the 13th. Friday the 13th it's yeah. spooky. Well, we were actually, you know, we originally had talks with Kane Hodder to get him here. And, yeah. uh, but then I realized there's no way he's going to come to Fargo on Friday the 13th. He's going to be at like a major, major event yeah. on that day, <laughs> yeah. which is the, t the case. But, um, yeah, I mean, for paranormal stuff, though, we have like, um, well, we got a huge UFO guest. Yeah, Martin Keller is a nationally known um, a journalist who's been on every major talk show and TV show and everything, he's got a great book about uh, called the Space Pen Club about UFOs and the the cover ups and everything because it's now come to light that the government's admitted all this stuff. So his stuff is very prescient on. Um, he's got some really interesting stuff. And that, that uh, is very cool. What do you think of the uh, UFO admissions at the government? I mean, are, are you on top of that then? Have you um, been? Well, you know, I, part of me thinks it's they're just uh, trying to cover their tracks on other stuff going on. <laughs> and they're trying to, you know, send it yeah. in a different direction. Yeah. You yeah. know, because for a long, everybody knew they were lying through their teeth for a long time. Yes. That they had a lot more information than they did, but you just didn't know how much. And they still haven't admitted to how much. They, you, I don't think you'll ever know that. Um, but yeah, the UFO thing is tough because I've, it's one of those where I've kind of been Mulder's, you know, camp. I want to believe, <laughs> you know, yeah. but I got to have some really hard evidence, you know. But there's pretty convincing evidence that something weird is going on. Um, but yeah, I mean, we, the other one is like Bigfoot. We have uh, we have the She Squatchers coming to Valley Count as well. Really? Yeah, they're uh, re they're actually a national group of all female <laughs> Bigfoot um, hunters, cryptid investigators, and two of them live in Fargo, but the other one's in North Carolina, and they travel all over the place. And um, I found out about them from one of our members who said you should invite them on, and so got a hold of them and they're they're gonna all be here so we have a pretty strong paranormal set of plus fargo paranormal and adrian and uh um and his whole thing with not only psychic stuff and ghost tours and things um all that's gonna be going on at valley kind aside from adrian paul and billy west who's our other main i was guest. i was gonna segue to yeah. it if you didn't get there yeah, because billy that west is, is billy huge. west i mean yeah. you for people who don't know i mean he he's the fry. voice of everybody he's, well he's, half uh, of futurama Stimpy. actually he's zoberg yeah. as well and he's oh. the <laughs> professor on there yeah he's, he's red uh, red m and m on the, all the m and m commercials oh really <laughs> he's bugs bunny now Oh, he took over doing Bugs Bunny. That's amazing. For the last couple of films and everything. That's amazing. Um, yeah, Billy's done everything, and um, yeah, Ren and Stimpy, and uh, so Doug. do you get to meet him personally? Oh yeah, 
That is so yeah. cool. I've met uh, most of these people long before I would get them out here. Actually, wow. I, tr- I traveled out. I used to ro- well, I used to cover San Diego Comic Con for uh, NBC. I'd I'd fly from Fargo, go out to San Diego and shoot video, and uplink it to NBC for the the network because they liked the fact that I knew what I was talking about. <laughs> A lot of people yeah. go out there and they just do, well, here's the geeks on parade kind of story. Yep. And it always pisses everybody off. So San Diego, they couldn't get away with that. So. They said, no, go ahead and do it. We'll cover your expenses and stuff. So I was like, great. I get to go for free and a press pass, best way to go. Um, so I did that for 15 years when I was at, at KVLY still. And, um, and I loved it. But it, it got, uh, the last one I did was a couple years ago, right, a couple years before COVID hit. And um, it's gotten so big, it's just a pain out there. I mean, it's something people should experience at some point, but it's ridiculously huge. You can't see everything at all in one There's year. There's just too much going There's on. There's way too much going on. I mean, and I, how many people are going to be at ValleyCon? I mean, I, well, that's going to be... we have a lot of transient traffic that comes through because we have a day pass, and we, it's very family-friendly during the day and then more adult-friendly at night. So we have literally thousands of people that come through through the weekend, but... At any given time, there might be 500 to 1,000 people there. You know, it, it's so it's packed. It's always busy, but it's 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 kind of deceiving until you find out how many. Yeah, you know, these same people were only here for two hours and took off. They came yeah. in, checked out the vendors, did one or two things. A lot of people come because they just want to meet, you know, Adrian Paul or Billy West or somebody, get an autograph, and then they they kind of take off. It's like that's fine. That's part of the gig, um, but. The people that come there and stay there for the entire weekend, there's probably a 800 to 1,000 of those, you know, and then quite a few more on beyond that. I just can't get over Billy West. That's, I mean, I grew up on Ren and Stimpy. Yep. I, uh, maybe this isn't very cool, but I show it to my four-year-old. She and I watch Ren and Stimpy. <laughs> I, I, I would be so cool to introduce my daughter to my daughter, Michiko, to show her Ren and Stimpy. You and got to bring her. Gotta bring her. <laughs> Billy's a cool guy. He's a lot of fun. And... Um, He's hilarious. His panel is Saturday afternoon. I think it's 3 or 3 o'clock or 4 o'clock. It's right on there. Um, but check the, the program guide is online, by the way. So if you want to check out the program guide for ValleyCon, yeah, Valley just Con. go to ValleyCon.com. Big blue yeah. button right on the front page. Just click on that. Let it load because it's a big file. It's a, it's a huge PDF of the whole program guide, and it'll show you what's going on. That is, that is so cool. I... I'm starstruck just thinking of that I'm that I'm talking to a person who talks to Billy West. That's, <laughs> I'm two degrees from Billy West now. That's very, very cool. We are going to move into Gorillas with their song Left Hand Suzuki Method, and we will be back with the Fargo Fresh. Don't go nowhere. <laughs> 